Good morning. Good morning. It's Creativity Week. <laughs> it's Thursday of Creativity Week. And today we have a special guest. This is Lynn. And some of you are like, we know who Lynn is. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Lynn is an avid quilter and has made multiple quilting projects. And I said, Lynn, would you share with us this morning a little bit about the process of quilting and the different types of quilts that you can put together, the techniques, because I've gone to, we've done a couple yeah. of quilt shows mm -hmm. and I love going to quilt shows with Lynn because she talks about all the different types of quilts and the stitches and machine uh, uh, quilting versus hand quilting. And I said, would you share some of that with us? So she's going to share some of the different uh, projects that she's done and the different types of stitching that's involved with them and just what does bring you inspiration like how do you pick what you're going to oh. do I just will see something I like I'll see a pattern or I'll see fabric uh, I love fabric I'm, I don't know why I love the different colors and the designs so I'll see fabric um, for example I have this blue I love blue so I have this blue fabric and I just love the colors so one day I'll make something out of it. And I try not to buy fabric without a, uh, a project. Okay. Um, because you don't always know if you have enough. But that's one way I'm inspired. But usually I'll just see a pattern. Uh, or if I'm making something for somebody, then I'll look for something that fits them. Okay. And, um, and that's sort of how I go, so. so. How did you first get involved in um, quilting? Well, my grandmother, my grandmother and my great-grandmother, her mom, lived together. And when I was very young, uh, I would go stay with them for a few <laughs> nights. They lived in Windsor. And grandma, they both sewed. They both knit, crocheted, sewed clothes for me, and they made quilts. And my grandma taught me, when I was around 12 years old, how to sew Barbie doll clothes. That's how I learned to sew. But I was always interested in quilts. And uh, when we lived in Kingsville, our home, the Windsor paper every day would have um, a column with a pattern that oh. you could send away for. It might be a knitting pattern or a sewing pattern. And there was a quilting pattern with little animals on it. And I sent away for it. And then I never used it. Till we lived in Caledonia in the 80s. Okay. And a fellow that went to school with Henry at McMaster, his wife was having a baby. So I thought I would make a quilt. I really didn't know much about what I was doing, um, but I knew how to sew. So I made this applique quilt with all these animals on it. And right. uh, that was my first one. But I always wanted to make a quilt. And my neighbor next door, when we lived in Caledonia, she had made quilts, so she helped me along. And then we had a ladies' night once at the church, and a lady showed us how to do some quilting. So it was through different things and taking classes that uh, I learned a lot of different things about wow. making quilts. And so I've been quilting for over 40 years, so I've learned a lot. Made a lot of mistakes too, but learned a lot. All right, so show us some of the things. Now, okay. first off, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to. This is yeah. often when I think of quilting blocks. This is something new I'm working on. Okay. And um, it's probably just going to be a wall hanging. But this is applique where you cut out shapes, you fold the edges under, and sew them down by hand. And I really oh. love hand sewing. When I sit down with my needle and thread and my thimble, my whole body just goes, <sighs> and I'm relaxed and. It's just very, very relaxing for me and calming. So, so, so this is applique. As you said that, I imagined Ephesians 2.10 where it says, We are God's handiwork. I could just imagine the Lord sitting down with us mm. and his hands like literally knitting us together. That's what if, um, Psalm says, that he knit us together. And as you said, just the, like, mm -hmm. that the Lord would have, peace over mm -hmm. when he creates us and what a wonderful feeling that brings to my spirit that just as you said you thoughtfully sit down and make each piece how the Lord just would have sat down and knit us together created us because we are his handiwork creating mm -hmm. Christ Jesus to do good work so mm -hmm. I've thought of that I've thought of creativity a lot and how it relates to who we are as God's creation right. like he is the creator yeah 
and we're made in his image so we're going to be creative too right yeah. and we're all creative in different ways some people think oh i'm not very creative but you are it just might not be in sewing or in cooking it could right. be anything all so, right so this is yeah. applique let That's me just applique. do a little closer so you can <laughs> see okay okay um this was a little now this came as a kit i like kits because you get all the fabric you need you don't have to pick out the fabric and it's all there and you can make it up quickly and and i made this my sister-in-law della who probably will watch this i'll tell her to watch she and i are both quilters uh, she was married to henry's twin and so we have quilting in common and we do a lot of um, quilting adventures together when we right. can we both bought this but the neat thing about quilting is you can both make the same project but it will look a little different and that's just like we're all different, right? Right. God created us all different. So this is, um, oh, that's what beautiful. would you call this? Well, it this has a bit of applique on yes. it. And uh, it came with these cute little buttons. So are, we'll just move people. it a little bit closer so you can see. This is Those are buttons. Joseph, Joseph and Mary. Uh -huh. And so you sewed those on. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So cute. Yep. So that's. You can make big quilts or you can make tiny little things like this. Yes, no, and speaking uh, with Della, who's probably watching, um, you were saying that <laughs> yes. this... So this one on the wall is a collaboration. A little closer. Della suggested this. Oh, this is quite a few years old. She said, do you want to do a project together? So we each, without telling the other, d designed a center. So she designed this center, and I designed a center that I don't have because it's hers. Right. Totally different, totally different colors. Then she gave me the center, and I put this part on. It's called a border. Right. She put a border on the one I made. Right. Then we switched again, and I made the last border and did the quilting, and she finished the one that I started, and it's hanging in her wow. house. So. Wow, that's the so cool. The other thing I love about being creative is the connections that it makes with people like you can do the creativity together or when you make it for somebody there's a connection uh, when I was teaching uh, up here in Barrie I I started by making a quilt for one of the uh, my fellow teachers who was pregnant yeah they were all younger than me and they were all at that age having babies and it got then I did for the one then I had to do for the next one because they kind of expected it. That's and true. I can't count how many quilts I made in the 12 years. But I made a baby quilt for every teacher who had a first baby. And I always think, God, how do you want me to use this to honor you? Right. And I make labels for the quilts and I put the name of the person it goes to, the year, the place, and my name. But I also added a scripture verse to the label. Right for each person that I made to as kind of a ministry. Right. And so there's a connection. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, in years to come, if they look at that quilt, maybe they'll think of me, but more importantly, will they look at that verse? Yeah. And I hope it will bless them because, you know, I tried to choose a verse that was specific to each person. And um, you think about the person when you're making something That's so for true. them. That's uh, so true. So I have a quilt from, uh, Lynn on my bed and I also have one from another lady in our church and that's exactly what she said that as she was making the quilt for me she was thinking about me and praying mm -hmm. for me and I just thought that is true mm -hmm. I know I'm a crocheter and I would when I would be invited to weddings I would make them a quilt and I would be thinking right. about them as I was knitting crocheting it together and piecing it together mm -hmm. and, and just like like God is thinking yeah. about us was thinking about us when he was putting us together right. I just love that image and he envisioned who we would be and, and what we could be yes and that's the same as with the project you have a picture in your mind of what it's going to look like when it's finished yeah and I make lots of mistakes and have to rip them out but that's all part of life right yeah because we aren't perfect mm -hmm. so true all right so this is your Canada quilt right so tell me a little bit about it so let me hold it up so you can see it so Canada's 150th anniversary which was 2016 or 2017 something. I can't remember 2017 um, right fabric companies made a special fabric 
for that. Okay. And um, where did I get these patterns? There were different stores in the area, in the Simcoe area, that had a pattern that you could buy to make a quilt. And so this is a whole conglomeration of a bunch of different patterns that represent Canada. So we have the bear, this is called the bear's paw okay. pattern for yeah. bears, of course. And then we have like, this is kind of like a northern rocks and the ch pine trees. And we've got something here for the veterans. Here, this one, this was wow. from a, this was from a um, quilt shop. Um, maple leaves, of course. Yeah. And all different things on here. There's a hockey player. We'll turn it this way around. This oh, was, and there's some moose right yeah, there. Yeah, moose and the hockey player. Oh, I see what she's doing. Is it the right thing? Nope, now it's upside down. Oh, and there's the map of Canada, too. So there's the map of Canada. And, uh, yeah, so that took a while to make. These are called flying geese, these blocks. That's another thing I love about quilting. All the blocks, the traditional blocks, have names. There's always something new to make, something new to learn. We should always be learning, right? And so this is paper piecing. So, so if you do something that has really sharp points or small pieces, it's hard to get them exact when you sew. So this pattern was traced on thin paper, and you sew on the lines. And then once you have a section finished, you tear the paper off the back and then you press it and you have nice sharp points and wow. yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but so again, beautiful. a different technique. <laughs> and so what are you working on right now? Um, well, this one that you showed is going to be a wall hanging. Um, I have a few, oh, I have this one that I'm quilting and I don't know what I'll do with it. So tell me about the safety pin. So I don't know if you can okay. see the safety pin. So a quilt, a technically a quilt is a fabric on the top that's usually done with different um, piecing, fabric on the bottom, and then some kind of batting in the middle to right, keep it warm. This is. So it's three layers. It's like a sandwich. And to hold the three layers together, you do the sewing. You could tie okay. it, or you could machine quilt it, or you can hand quilt it. And when you're doing that, so it doesn't get all wrinkled and bunched up. You can uh, hand baste the whole thing to hold it in place or use pins. And some right. people even use a spray glue that will really? wash out. Yes. So I was at a quilt show years ago with Della and I found this block and it says, grade three teacher, 1931, Mrs. Petty on the block and uh, I bought it and then put the border around it. I have no idea who Mrs. Petty was, but because I had taught grade three, I was drawn to it. Right. And I thought the neat thing is this was unfinished and then I was able to finish it for whoever. And I love that, I love doing that. Wow, which reminds me, see this is what happens <laughs> with, with creativity. I just immediately start thinking of, of Bible verses and stories and how Paul writes, you know, some people sow mm -hmm. the, the seed and some people water it and some people harvest it. And sometimes I think we can walk away from situations and we get so concerned that maybe we didn't share the gospel or right. maybe, you know, we didn't listen mm -hmm. long enough to the mm -hmm. individual. But just like this piece, like you said, like you went and you finished it. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to trust the Lord that we've done what he's asked us to do and then somebody else is going to come in and and encourage and water mm -hmm. the seed and mm -hmm. and be there and I think sometimes we can guilt ourselves into I should have done more I should have done oh, more yeah. but just as as we've said this morning these are all in process and right. and we are the body of Christ and we work together to complete mm -hmm. the tasks that Christ has given to us and so just like this um, was completed by a couple of people and this was completed by a couple of people. Our job here on earth is to work together right. to do the tasks that Christ yep. has for us. So would you pray for us this morning? I will, morning? I will. Father in heaven, thank you that you have made us creative people, just like you are. 
And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to use our creativity to honor you. Thank you for giving us creativity that we can just enjoy to give us pleasure. Would you help us always to honor you in everything that we do? Would you use us to bless others? And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing. <laughs> right? It's so exciting. I love uh, learning more and more about the creativity mm -hmm. that's in our church family. And so we want to encourage you to be creative today. And so that's one of the reasons why I say go outside because that's how the Lord inspires mm -hmm. me often. Mm -hmm. So like, share, go outside, and go help your community experience Christ. Bye. Bye-bye.